What's up everybody, Daco Aquatics here. This is the long-awaited Scarlet Battis breeding project. I was finally able to locate a couple of females this year. Uh, shout out to Chad at Exotic Aquatic Fort Lauderdale. Um, and while growing them out, I was able to passively spawn twice now um, this male and female that survived um, acclimation and quarantine and everything. Um, and there's a bunch of babies in this tank. So they were so good at spawning and not eating a lot of their eggs that what I've decided to do is clear out this tank down to the soil. This is Akadama bonsai soil, medium size, if you're interested. Um, and scarlet battis are egg scatterers. So what this, I think, allowed to happen in this tank, because there's the same soil, this is just clean, is that they spawned, the eggs were able to fall through the cracks of the medium sized soil. They're such a small fish, so the eggs are tiny, tiny. And then um, the fry were able to hide in all the foliage here, all the plants, the baby tears in the back, and the boosts and the rocks. So awesome setup, but I think I can do better than this. So my plan for this one is to take the male and female that is spawning out of this tank where all the babies are put them in here, but before I do, I'm gonna take one of my mounds of Sabwasser tang, right? Pull it out and do a nice bed in this tank, all the way front to back. So when they spawn, they'll spawn in the Sabwasser tang. It'll be another layer of protection for the fry. And what I'm guessing is, I should be able to get even more fry survive um, to adulthood or at least past the point of where these guys as adults can't eat them and pump out more females for the community. That's my goal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, pull some Sabwasser tang out of my shrimp breeding tanks and I'll be back to show you how I set it up and eventually I'm going to pull the fish out, put the pair over here, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Daco Aquatics, out. All right, so this is a pretty easy process. I'm just gonna go in this gigantic mound of Sabwasser tang that I have. Stick my dirty hands in here. Just kidding, there's a shrimp tank. Don't do that with dirty hands. And I'm gonna pull out a whole bunch and I'm gonna put it down here. And I'm gonna keep pulling out some because I want a nice thick layer so the eggs can go down in the soil and the fry have a lot of protection. Look at that, I have hooker moss mats in here. I'll go with, play with that later. All right, so let's do one more handful here. This is this stuff is amazing. So Wasser Tang is by far the best moss, best moss for spawning shrimp or spawning fish um, like I'm doing now, best moss for shrimp. And I don't know, this might be enough, but we'll see, you get the point. Just pulling moss and I'm gonna put it in this tank, try and clear out most of the snails, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so here's just a quick process. This stuff sinks, like I said, it's amazing. It, it has so much surface area for biofilm and stuff. You know, when I start new shrimp colonies for breeding, and I start it with Subwasser tang compared to java moss or any other type of moss. I mean, it's so you get so much more baby survival rate right at the beginning because it's just there's just so much surface area and it's it's moss. They love climbing on it. It's it's safe for them because they can get in between the little nooks and crannies. I mean, this stuff it needs more love. It's underrated in the hobby, in my opinion. I'm gonna keep doing this until. Uh, until you can't see the flow no mo. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, so it's super cloudy, but this is pretty much what I'm going with. It's not ultra dense, but it's so much cover that they're gonna spawn. It'll be able to fall through the moss into the gravel. And when the babies start coming out of the gravel, there's plenty of hiding spots in this stuff. I think this is gonna work great. All right, now the fun part. I'm going to break this tank down like I did this one while carefully removing the Scarlet Battis. I have some supplies here. 
I have to go run and grab a catch cup um, and I will see how many jubies I have at the same time which will be really cool because it's hard to count them in this mess so I'm gonna do the same thing as I did over here because I just feel like that setup even for a juvie grow out is gonna be so much better than what I got going on now this setup is so old and it's looking kind of raggy so we're gonna give it a fresh start with some nice subwasser tang carpets I'll be back all right, we're gonna get some water in these catch cups real quick before I make a mess in here. It's plenty for them. And we're gonna take the parents and I could just plop them, but I'm gonna drip them because I only have one adult female and I really don't want to uh, lose her by just stressing her out, dropping her into tanks with different temps because my tap's a little warmer than my room so yeah this is like five degrees right now so all right um i'm not going to show you this part because i don't have a tripod but i will do better in the future i promise i'm um, gonna break this tank down nice and slow pull out all the decor and plants put it in a container like i did with the other one um, cover it and deal with cleaning those up and repurposing those plants in another build um, once everything's out of the tank, I'll drain it, I'll catch the fish, and I will report back. All right, so got them all out. Here are the babies. A lot of these are like near, near color up size. There's about 10 of them in there. And then here is the pair, Big Mama. And sorry for the focus, these are tiny fish and the male. So like I said, they're gonna go in here and then I'm gonna redo this tank, clean it up. Um, try not to disturb the gravel because honestly there might be more eggs in the gravel from the pair. Um, and then put these guys back in here and just kind of have this as a grow out for now. And eventually my plan is to do a rack of five gallon. These are 5.5 gallons and really just play musical chairs right with the tanks so take a couple pairs put them in tanks and then a week later move them and continuously do that down the rack and i should be able to generate tons of fry that way just with simple subwasser tang uh, carpets and um, moving those pairs around so they have time to get their spawning on and then leave the tank and then nothing will be in that tank for a while so We'll see. Anyway, let me get to it and then I'll show you the finished project and hopefully it produces. I'll definitely keep you posted on it. All right, this tank's drained. I'm doing deep cleans because this soil's pretty old. It's not really buffering anymore like you would want with Akadama, but um, these fish don't need it. My water's soft anyway, so the pH is likely to stay around 6.5 like my other tanks. But wouldn't it be so cool if there were micro shellies that could use like ram's horn snails for breeding. I'm a nerd, I'll be back. Boom, looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna drip the fish back in cause the temperatures are off. And we drip. All right, so the babies are still dripping. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, put mommy and daddy in their new tank. These are some of the most smart nano fish. They like know how to avoid capture a lot of times, especially when you're netting them out of a tank. All right, here we go. See you later, dude. Oh, just looking at me. And then here's the female. See what I mean? <laughs> smart. But not smarter than me. Right. Make more babies. Alright, so because I don't want to deal with 
netting each one of these babies out individually, I'm going to attempt the one-handed pour. Do not do this unless you're a pro. I'm not a pro. <laughs> and then you gotta do it fast because they like to like swim upstream. So at the very end, get them all in there. See? And I ruined it. <laughs> and now they're just swimming around the container. Fantastic. All right, well, I'll get you the majority of them in here all at once. Swim away, babies. All right. Now we got to catch these guys. Well, that wasn't too bad. A couple more. Okay, I'll just take the baby baby. Be gone. All right, you get the point. All right, guys, there you have it. Two Subwasser tanked up tanks for my Scarlet Battis breeding project. Um, if this works and I see a lot higher fry survival rate, I'll probably expand this project and maybe try some other egg scattering fish as well. Um, CPDs are another big one on my list that are a huge pain in the butt to spawn just because they're daily egg scatterers and, you know, they're known to eat their eggs. So are Scarlet Battis. So I'm shocked that I got so many fry just passively spawning in their grow out tank, which is essentially all they were in all this time. You know, so now I have a little bit better of a setup. I'm expecting a lot higher fry survival rate. They'll have plenty of microorganisms because these tanks and that soil is so old. That's a big, big thing too. You know, the Subwasser tank is seasoned. The soil's full of microorganisms. You know, this is really gonna produce, I think, a ton of fry. So if, it, if I start seeing a lot of fry, I'll probably end up moving the, uh, the pair and doing it in a third tank, and then eventually consolidating all the fry into one tank and just, you know, hopping the pair around and giving them a week or so to spawn and drop their eggs, and before the fry hatch and they have a chance to eat them, get them out of there. You know, but I'll definitely keep you updated, especially over on my Instagram where I post daily. That's at Daku Aquatics on Instagram. Um, and that's pretty much it for today, guys. I really appreciate you watching this. And if you have any questions, you can always DM me on Instagram. I'm always helping people out whenever they need it. Um, but really, have a great day. Thanks again. Daku Aquatics out.